Hi, everybody. Um, my name is Sutrida Maranasi. I am the MediCap Project Manager and the Senior Program Officer at Physicians for Human Rights, and I'm here to talk to you about MediCap. So meet Zelda, my alter ego. Zelda is, uh, uses her powers to pursue justice for victims in RoboCity, but she can only do so if she is fully charged and if she's created a network of like-minded robots. Now, her energy sources are completely depleted. Um, thankfully, she has found the last three solar panels in all of RoboCity, and it's a sunny place. Meet Ted and Gertie, also members of her network, uh, to pursue justice in RoboCity. Now, since these are the last three solar panels, there are other robots, the saboteurs, who also want to get their hands on these solar panels. So Zelda's challenge is to get these solar panels to Ted and Gertie. Now, Ted is located in location one, and Gertie is located in location two. Now, the only way she can get these solar panels to them is via a conveyor belt. And the conveyor belt is really slow, so it takes a lot of time to get to Ted and to Gertie. And Ted and Gertie's energy sources are also quite depleted. Now, there are some limitations to this conveyor belt. So as you add more weight to it, it reduces the speed of the belt. There are constant delays and breakdowns. And there, of course, is the threat to, of attacks from the saboteurs. Now, changing gears a little bit from Zelda's world to Physicians for Human Rights, um, we are creating an app called MediCapt. And in MediCapt, it's a forensic mobile app that we hope to merge standardized medical information with forensic photography. Um, and, and the whole hope is that this record would then just be uploaded to a storage, a secure storage, and then transmitted to the police and lawyers and justice. <clears throat> and one of, the, one of the problems that PHR is tackling at this point is the impunity that perpetrators um, are, have in the Congo. Um, they're not held to account for their crimes. Um, and so with this, we hope to increase the evidence that is, is required. Now, we're working in one of the harshest environments in the world, the DRC. Um, it's under-resourced, has poor infrastructure, um, the roads are impassable. Now, this is a supply closet in a medical hospital in Uvira. And as you can see, it's also under-supplied. Um, but this is also where there is a lot of scope and potential for technology. So our challenge is much like Zelda's in that we're trying to get information from one place to another. So our doctors are inputting information into the mobile app um, through MediCapt and then hoping to get the record to the police and then the lawyers and judges. Now in this case, the conveyor belt is the pathway of transmission um, or the pathway um, of connectivity between and among all of these sectors. So our first challenge is network access in these remote areas in the Congo. Um, so while they'll be able to input the information offline, at some point, the doctors will have to be able to establish connectivity to upload the record uh, to the server. Our second challenge is bandwidth capacity. So in order to meet the requirements for court admissibility for the forensic photographs, the, the files are quite large. Um, so how do we transmit this um, with such low connectivity and the low bandwidth that's available in the DRC? And then lastly uh, are the saboteurs. Um, the, the data security is a major problem from, for two points, really. Um, one that Allison just touched upon, which is the chain of custody and maintaining chain of custody, um, but also for uh, patient confidentiality. So in the end, what we're really trying to do is bring the perpetrators uh, forward um, and to hold them accountable for their crimes. And we believe that survivors should have their day in court. Um, and much like Zelda, Ted, and Gertie are trying to bring justice in RoboCity, our doctors and lawyers and, and judges are also trying to do the same in the Congo. So will you help us? Thank you.